Hello, and welcome to A Wool Gathering Podcast. A big welcome to both new and returning viewers. My name is Meredith. My cohort, Natasha, has already recorded her portions, and for those of you familiar with the podcast, we'll be splicing them together to create a cohesive whole. I wanted to... Oh, first of all, yes. <laughs> this is always so easy to forget. On Ravelry and Instagram, my username is Meroshop, M-E-R-E-O-S-H-O-P, and you can find us also on, oh my goodness, it's been too long since I recorded, <laughs> Ravelry Instagram, and then our website is woolgatheringcollective.com, so you can find us, find me and us, all those places. I wanted to start today with a couple thank yous. I have been blown away by the friendship and generosity of some of our fellow podcasters and, and knitter friends, knitterly friends. So first of all, a huge thanks to the Expat Podcast. We were mentioned uh, on her one of her latest episodes recently, and I see that she and Eric are in New York City this weekend for Vogue Knitting Live. So they're having a good time, I'm sure. I'd also want to say thank you to a few people who gifted patterns to me over Christmas and New Year the holidays. So that would be Eric and Jennifer and Sarah. So thanks very much. Also thanks to Skeens and School Podcast. Uh, that's Deanna for the for the mention as well. We really appreciate it, and it is really true. Like without each other helping to, I don't know, share what we love, then a lot of us, well, we probably would be like dead in the water. You know, we'd have our little core group of viewers, and that's it. So I'm just really thankful for all the friendships and that we have made via the podcast. Hi everyone, and welcome to one half of the Wool Gathering Podcast. I am Natasha. You can find me on Instagram as Natasha Knits and on Ravelry as Natasha LeBlanc. You can find the Wool Gathering Podcast on Ravelry. We have a group. It's just if you search Wool Gathering Podcast, it will come right up. Um, feel free to join the group, introduce yourself. There is a hello and say welcome, or welcome and say hello, oh my goodness, thread that you can um, introduce yourself in, and we would love to hear from you. To new viewers, thank you so much for checking us out. We hope you stick around. And to returning viewers, thank you guys for coming back. We are on episode 7. I can't, I mean, that's not a lot, but it is a lot um, to me. And it's just been so much fun, and it's so great to have all the chatter in the Ravelry group. And we just have a really great group of Woolies who have joined us on this uh, wool gathering journey. So thank you, all of you. Happy New Year. It is January. It is early in the morning. Rose and I are up. I am just having my first cup of coffee. And uh, we have a really busy day ahead, so I needed to get up early and make sure I recorded before the day started today. So here I am, trying to be alive. So I'm going to, I have some thank yous that I need to make sure to say. All of you who participated in the Christmas Cal, the knit along for the Christmas socks, so much fun and so great to see all of the completed pairs that were ready for Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. I'm really excited to pick out my the yarn I'm going to use next year for for that knit along, and I'm scared that it was very last minute this year, so I'm scared that well last year it's January now. I'm scared that this year. I'm going to have so much time to pick out the yarn that I'm just going to have too many options and get stressed out and have to knit like four pairs of Christmas socks. But if I have time this year, maybe I can, instead of washing the ones I knit to wear the next day this year. So thank you. That was really fun, and I'm glad that we did that. And next year, we'll 
be more organized and we'll definitely have prizes for next year's knit along. I want to give a special shout out to Danny from the Little Bobbins, uh, Little Bobbins Knits podcast. She gave us a really nice shout out on Instagram. She was, um, she was watching our podcast and she, the latest one where I was wearing the Panay shawl and she fell in love with it. How could you not? It's a gorgeous pattern. So she posted a picture of the, um, the yarns that she is going to use and they're gorgeous. Just perfect, almost icy winter colors. They're so gorgeous. So I think that's going to be really beautiful when she knits that up and I'm sure you'll all see it. Um, I especially need to thank Eric from the Sticks Plus Twine podcast. He sent me a lovely little Christmas gift on Ravelry. He sent me a pattern, which I will talk about later. So Eric, thank you so much again for that. That was a lovely uh, treat to receive on Christmas. I also want to give a shout out to Sarah Stevens, who is one half of the Fiber by Design podcast and Oloops Yarn. Her and Lydia Dye Yarn, and they also have a really great podcast, which you guys should check out if you haven't already. They've been on my list for a really long time. I've watched them for quite quite some time. Two years? More than, more than a year, for sure. Um, so she sent us her latest shawl pattern, which is called um, 74, and the story that goes along with the shawl um, is really nice as well. It's about Expo 74 that was held in the town she lives in. Spokane, I believe it's pronounced. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you. And just also all of the comments from um, our Christmas episode, from episode six. We had so much fun filming that episode. I mean, we were at London Wool, so that in and of itself was a treat. And just the gift opening. It was really special and it was really fun and just super Christmassy. And it was the fact that we got to film it so close to Christmas was also a treat. So I'm glad you guys all enjoyed that. And thank you so much for your lovely comments in all the places. Jumping right into FOs. I wish I had the best one to show you, but I don't. I finished my mom's Atelier Cardigan. I checked my Ravelry account and I had started it in June. So, and I only had, I mean it was, it's knit with worsted weight, or DK, worsted, worsted weight yarn. And I just, I started it early summer, so it was still cool in June, but then the rest of the summer we were traveling a lot and going back and forth to the trailer in the cottage and it just wasn't something that, it was heavy and I just didn't want to carry it around. Not summer knitting. And then fall came and I had all these other projects and I just kept putting it to the side. And I think because it wasn't a project that, it wasn't for her birthday, it wasn't, it was just a sweater I was knitting my mom so I didn't have a deadline for it. Because normally I'm really good about finishing things. That's probably the longest sitting whip I have ever had. So after Christmas, I told myself that this is not going to be on my needles going into the new year. Um, so I finished it and there was only 30 rows and the pocket linings left to do. They were just, I mean, it's, I've knit myself this cardigan, but it was, this was four sizes larger and the rows were just so long to purl back. Oh, but I did it in three days. I had it finished, the ends were woven in, and it was blocking on the 30th, and it took quite a while to dry, so I was able to call my mom on New Year's Day and ask her to come over. We were taking down our Christmas tree, and she popped over, and I made her a latte, and I mean, she knew, because I said, come over, I have something for you. She's like, I'm busy, I don't have time. I'm like, mom, please. Like, I wanted it gone in the new year, out of my house. So... She had a latte and I just had it nicely folded and I walked down the hallway and presented it to her in the living room. So it fit her perfectly. The color is great. She loved it. And it was just, she's a really knitworthy person. So it was super special. And she sent me a text the next day. She's new to texting. So it's also very cool that she sent me a text. But she said, I just love my sweater. Thank you so much, Natasha. So just to get that, you know, 
that was just really special and I know that she will cherish it and take care of it. Anyways, I don't, so I don't have it with me, but you can, I posted a picture on my Instagram and it's also on my Ravelry page. So that is the Atelier Cardigan by Heidi Kiermeyer. It's a great pattern. So super duper easy. It's just an open cardigan with pockets. It's really, really cozy to wear and just an easy knit. I think it, it's a great first sweater. It wasn't my first, but it should have been because <laughs> it's a really good pattern to to just follow the instructions and to have the finished object is great. I am just blah, blah, blah. It's really, I haven't talked to anyone yet, so you guys are lucky. Um, so my mom's sweater and then my Christmas socks. You saw them, most of you probably saw them on the Ravelry group and on Instagram, but here they are on the sock blockers. So this is um, the oh the opal pop music colorway, and as I mentioned before, I didn't get them to match. They have different toes, but that's fine. So I wore them on Christmas Eve, and then as soon as we got home that night, I I soaked them and. Um, put them on my sock blockers and they were dry by the morning so that I could wear them again on Christmas Day. Because initially I was just going to wear them one or the other, but it wasn't Christmas Eve and then I was like, ah, I want to wear them again today. So I did. So they were worn twice and I'm not going to wear them again until next year. So next year I'll have a pair for Christmas Eve and a pair for Christmas Day. And then as the years continue, I'll just have a whole week's worth of Christmas socks. So... Um, it's just my usual vanilla sock pattern, um, toe up tube, I do the afterthought heel, um, and then just a two by two rib at the top, and I, I do a 64 stitch sock. So, they did, one of them, I was doing laundry and I took out the, the basket out of the dryer and there was a sock in there, so I freaked out. But it was fine. I tried it on. It hasn't really. I mean, it's opal. It's this tough. It can handle anything. So then I had to wash the other one and put it through the dryer as well because I'm OCD and they need to match what they've been through. So those are my Christmas socks. And then I showed you guys the alpaca merino yarn that I had purchased at our Christmas, um, Turner's Christmas at the Coliseum that I have been staring at. And Sean said, if you, if you want, you can... Knit me a hat with that yarn. We'll get it. Yes. So after Christmas, I wanted to, or in the new year, I wanted to knit him a hat because, you know, the snowstorms have started and he needs a really warm hat for shoveling. So I asked him, you know, I pulled up some simple patterns on Ravelry with just, you know, a two by three rib or just, just easy. Cause I mean, it's all packets. It needs to be not knit too tightly. And I knew it was just going to be like big bag hat on his head. Anyways, he said, no, you know, Natasha, I just want it to look like baby Soren's hat, who I will get to in a little bit. And so that's just the simple baby hat that has the rolled rim and then the little um, pointy, pointy part that you can tie a knot on top. I was like, really? I don't think that's going to work. I mean, this it's not going to have any structure to it at all, and it's alpaca, so I just think it's going to get really stretched out. It's going to be a bag on your head. It's like, just trust me. I'm the knitter, but okay. So, Rosa wants to say hello. Oh, good morning, Rosa. So, I trusted him, and I cast on, I think I did 75 stitches on size US 9 needles. This is actually not going to work right now. And it turned out really great. So it's just a simple rolled rim. I just stuck in it the whole way and I started decreasing here. So it's a perfect, I mean, it, it looks ginormous. And I mean, I know that when there's a big snowstorm and it's just wet, heavy snow that's falling, this thing is going to get soaked and it's going to stretch out. Hasn't happened yet. But it's beautiful. It looks awesome on him. He totally, he was right. It's great. There's a picture on my Instagram of this hat on him as well. So, one for Sean. He wins. 
Um, yeah, and that was, so that was the Petite Moore Family Alpacas. Lopi Yarn, Alpaca and Merino. And my other concern when I was knitting that was that I don't have, I don't know where the yarn is. It didn't really have any twist to it at all. It was just a really fluffy, almost single ply. Well, not, but kind of, it was just, my concern was that if I did, okay, Sean, I will try this, but if it doesn't work, I need to rip it out and start over, and I, this yarn can't handle that. So he's like, so when I said that to him, he said, it'll be fine. It's going to turn out great. You won't have to rip it out. Okay. So it did. And it looks great. So that's my other FO. And then my last one is a hat that I knit for a friend. As a thank you for just being a great friend. It is the beeswax hat, which is the pattern that Eric purchased for me for Christmas. And... I knit it in Heidi's by hand, which is, it's kind of part of my acquisitions as well. The lighting is horrible in here. There you go, a little bit. Um, it's the Heidi's by hand, her hand dyed merino. It's kind of DK, in between DK and worsted. Not quite worsted, but the pattern is gorgeous. I did find that I needed to finish it quickly because I need to give it to her today actually so I couldn't even watch a podcast while I was knitting this pattern and I don't know if it's because I haven't knit a pattern where you had to pay attention like this in quite quite some time and I'm not I'm not a lover of cables and these were easy cables that you didn't even need a cable needle for but I still just had to sit there and look at every single line and concentrate. I didn't make any mistakes. I didn't have to go back at all, which is good, but I just found it, it hurt my brain a little bit. Um, but it's a great, it's a great pattern. And one thing I do have to say about the pattern is that she notes the cable, like how to do it, you know, the little blurb on each page of the pattern. So you don't have to flip back to page one. You know sometimes if you get up and you go make a cup of tea and you sit back down and you're like, wait, which one is this? So it's on the page, no matter what page you're on, which is so great. So I just highlight that and I just, I mean, by the end of it, you know how to do it. But it's just nice to have in case you have that moment where your brain just, what? I don't even know how to knit right now. So that was, that was good about the pattern. And it is just really gorgeous. I went down, um, no, I went down a needle size and still found that I could have gone down another needle size for the rib. I know that it's, you know, the ribbing, the lighting is really bad. The ribbing follows up through the pattern, so it's not necessarily like the brim on the hat, but I wish that it would be a little bit more defined is my only thing. So if I knit this hat again, I will go down to probably a size four if I use this yarn. Look how pretty that yarn is. So dark in here, I apologize. Anyways, I love it. It's gorgeous and I might knit it again after I knit a really easy pattern. Mm -hmm. That's my new Ravelry shirt. <laughs> it has shush sheep on it. With all the names of different breeds of sheep. And it's a sheep. Sorry for that shot there, people. That's funny. <laughs> Today, for tea, I am drinking... Black, it's a black tea. Here's the thing. It's a stash tea. Black forest. Black tea. And this was part of a little parcel I received this week from someone special, Dana in Winnipeg. And yeah, it's yummy. I like trying new teas. Mm -hmm. It's good. You don't need milk in it, which is kind of nice. I've stopped drinking milk for the most part. In my coffee at work, I drink a lot of coffee, so I switched to almond milk. Just, I feel like there's less sugar and less calories in it. I should probably fact check that, but 
I don't feel as ugh, you know, by my sixth cup of coffee, which I have usually every day during the week. <laughs> All right, so this section, I'm gonna talk about my finished objects. Oh, Natasha would kick me if she were here, or I would kick myself because I don't know, she just manages to whip things out. She starts something, she has like keen focus until she's done. And I am not that way. I do have socks to show you though. And probably some of you have already seen these ones. So I have two. These are my Christmas socks. They need to be washed, but. So this is the opal colorway that we have talked about so much. And I wore them Christmas Eve and a couple other times. They're very nice. I just don't know how much I'll wear them during the year because they're really Christmassy. And then these are the others. These you may recognize from my Instagram feed. These are the ones that I was knitting when Natasha and I met the first time and went to Isaac's Way. Yeah, that was the first time. And she showed me how to do the heel and we cut the wrong place. No worries, it's all figured out now. And so they are a very basic toe up afterthought heel pattern. It was a free pattern published by The Loop in London and it's by Juju Vale. Over the Christmas break, I worked like a fiend on a sweater. Fiend? Fiend. I worked really hard on a sweater called Stopover by Mary Jane Muckleson. And I was so keen to get it finished. I wanted to wear it when I picked TG up at the airport and all this stuff. Anyway, so I tried it on the last day. Okay, here's the thing. We had a flood in the basement when TJ was gone. It seems like every time he goes away, there's something. And I had planned to, like, get it finished that night or the next night. But I just was really worried about the water in the basement, and it didn't get done. And I haven't knit on it since. So, I'm good. I have my basket here. Well, and maybe you guys could give me your opinion, because I've never knit a bottom-up sweater before. And I try, I have done the bottom all the way up to here. I've joined the arms. But now when I try it on, you know, I don't have any shoulders or anything. But I feel like it's much too short. And I don't know if it's because uh, my best measurement is like pushing it out and pulling it up. So I, I almost feel like maybe I should go back, take the arms off, add more length, and then finish. What would you do? See, I don't know because I don't know how it like how it's gonna fit. I followed the measurements. I don't know. Yeah, I followed the measurements, and I just think like it should fit. But if it's too short, I'm not gonna wear want to wear it. Having enough yarn isn't a problem. Whoop. So there it is. See, like I just feel, and maybe if it's too, I don't know. So like, there's the arms. I just, I can't lean back much better. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. <sighs> what would you guys do? Would you take go back? I mean, it's not far that I have to go back. Two inches, maybe. If that. Anyhow, so this is the bottom detail. It's really sweet. I'll show you the sleeves. really sweet sweater. It's in a uh, lopi. I don't know. I'm like stalled because if I finish it and it doesn't, if it's too short. This is a theme, isn't it, guys? I'm never satisfied with what I make. Not cool. I think I should probably go add some length. Better too long than too short, right? I'm sure some wise person has said that. And if not, then I'll be that wise person saying that. So that's stop over. I feel like I didn't finish anything. I didn't finish anything other than the socks. My blanket that I said I was gonna finish, I didn't work on at all. Wow, I'm really bad at knitting. Yeah, so it's all right here. I have enough squares. Oh, I dropped a couple. Have enough squares to do it as per the pattern. This is the mitered crosses blanket by Mason Dixon. Nadine. I think 
yeah, all of the ones that I have done do have this border piece. So I just have to put this together. I'm almost sore, sorry. I have to put this together. Yeah, I need to just do it. I was folding laundry last night and watching X-Files, and I kept getting distracted from the laundry and watching the show. And so I had to keep saying, don't dilly-dally, don't dilly-dally. Sooner you get this laundry done, the sooner the better. So I just need to stop dilly-dallying on this. I would like to stop dilly-dallying. All right, so those are all my, oh, they're not finished objects. They're like, that was like finished objects and works in progress. Oh. Hmm. Well, if that's both, then why don't I show you my cozy memories blanket? Okay, hold on. Sorry. Alrighty, daddy. My cozy, I have to say it like this, cozy memories blanket is in my maple mousse fibers bag, which I love. So here we go. There's more than before. All right, so this one is from, these are new, these are the new squares. So this one is from Natasha. It's the yarn, um, Dirty Water Dye Works that she knit her sister's sweater in. This one is from, this red is from Molly uh, from a homespun house. And I received this as part of my Christmas swap with her. This one I received from Around Robin Swap in her group. And that's, I think, those are the only ones I know. I'm going to start writing down uh, what each one is, maybe taking a picture. And I've seen a couple cool ways that people document. So for a long time, what I was doing is I just took an index card, not index card, like a little tag, and I'd wrap the yarn on it a couple times. And then, although that doesn't have the name of the yarn on it, it's just like a little record of the yarn that I had. On in on Ravelry, I did a stash entry called Mini Skeins, and I have them all listed there who they're from. But I really should start recording when I knit them into the blanket. There's okay, so I'm looking for this girl on Instagram. She she did something really interesting that I liked and I thought that I would want to do. So she, well, it's cute because she loves notebooks, washi tape, mini schemes, all of it, right? And anyhow, I'll see if I can find it here as I'm talking. But what she does is every time she knits one into her blanket, she puts a little snippet of it into her book and writes it down, which I love that idea. I'm just gonna see if I can find it here really quickly because it's worth showing. Here we go. Oh dear. Can I see that? So, and that's by a knit box. A K N I T B O X. And her real name is Roberta. She has a lovely Instagram feed, Roberta. A knit box. So I'm gonna maybe think about that. I have lots of little notebooks, so I'll just I'll get one out and oh, where we go. All right, so I guess that's all for me for works in progress and finished objects. Works in progress. To me, the cozy memories blanket is kind of an FO and a whip, and it always will be for a long, long time. We went to my father-in-law's cottage um, right after Christmas. Just Sean and I and the dogs. It was such a treat. In the middle of nowhere on a lake. Ugh, it was amazing. What? If there had been a fly on the wall watching us try to start a fire and split wood, we are not handy people. 
it was a hoot. But it was just so relaxing. It was so nice to get away and just drink wine and coffee and eat cheese and all the delicious things. Snuggle with the pups and just knit in it and play cards and have fires. It was awesome. And there was a snowstorm the second day we were there. So we were just stuck there. And it was so nice to, or beautiful to see the lake go from crazy choppy water to still to frozen and then to see it melt again. It was amazing. It was, it was a really good trip. So I only brought my Cozy Memories blanket because I really wanted to pump out some swears. So I finished up all of the um, special ones that Emily, because she sent me a lot, so I had picked out, um, I don't even know how many, the ones that she specifically told me what they were. I picked out those ones to knit the Emily section, and then I started the ones from Katie that she had sent me. So I'm quite impressed with the size. I can't even... I'm going, I'm, I did the width and then I'm going to go up. So I think it's really hard to tell you, but to show you, this is how wide it is. Okay, that was my chair. And then he, this is where I was, where my octopus is, last time I showed this. So I have knit... All of these are Emily's. <clears throat> this is my favorite, this is melted crayon. Oh wait, you guys, no. How did I do this? Yeah, that's right. That's not melted crayon, I lie. So these are all Emily's. And then I started um, my fourth row in the height. Um, so this is Emily's and this is Emily's. And so is this. That was the last one. And I, I thought it was fun because I didn't even realize that she had, like, this was wind into a mini skein. And I couldn't tell that it was a Christmas colorway until I was knitting it up. So that was great. And I finished hers on this one. And then I did my Christmas sock yarn. So that's Christmas 2015. And then I started the minis that Katie sent me. So I have one, two, three, four, five of them done up. And I'm sorry, this is Melted Crayon. And I love that colorway. So I'm, I'm loving it. It's just such a happy thing to knit on. It really is. So exciting. I could just stare at it and smile. And I have it in, this goes in acquisitions as well. Um, Aunt Mary bought me, brought my birthday present when she came up for Christmas. So this right now, until I get my Cozy Memories kit from Molly, is holding my Cozy Memories blanket and all of my, um, I have some Lavache lotion, my needles, my scissors, um, and then my mini skeins from Katie are in here. So it's, it's made in New Brunswick. The company is called Top Sail Canvas. And you can find them online. And it's just a perfect size uh, little canvas basket bag. And I think it was only $14. I checked out the website. So really great for, for knitting projects, but also just to have around the house for a kid's room to put toys in. Um, but yeah, it's perfect for cozy memories. It fits right in there, so I just sit it in the living room. So as soon as I opened that from Aunt Mary, I was like, oh, this will be for my Cozy Memories blanket. Awesome. So that is one um, whip, and it will be for some time. And then I have Sean's socks on needles. Sean doesn't want socks. That's fine. He's going to get some. He says that his feet will be too warm. It was minus 30 the other day, guys. Here, okay? His feet need these socks. And they're really cool. So this is yarn that I purchased at Knit East from Highland Handmaids. She had a few salt striping colorways, so I had to be sure to get to get one. So I have the What's This colorway on her striped maple sock base. And I'm telling you, this is awesome. Look at that. 
the different um, tones of gray and then they lighten up and go to white. And I have my Maple Mousse Fibers mousse on here. I thought it was manly, so, you know, Sean would, I don't know, try and <laughs> think these are cool, Sean. So I, he has, he doesn't have, I think he's size nine or, yeah, nine. Um, and he doesn't have wide feet, so I'm, I'm just doing 64 stitches, the same as I would do for myself, on size 1.5 US. And I just made the toe a little bit, like I started with 14 stitches, so the toe is a little bit wider from the get-go. Um, but I'm really enjoying the yarn. It's knitting up beautifully, and I took that off the wrong way. And so I haven't, normally I, I get the second one started right away, and I haven't done that yet, and I can't tell you why. I don't know. I should have. So that's what it looks like. It's gorgeous. It's super, super squishy and just beautiful yarn. So that is on my needles. And then, so really right now, these socks and my cozy memory blanket, that is it. But last night I prepped two more whips so that they're in bags ready to go um, because I need, I need socks for myself on the needles. Hello. So this is yarn I purchased when Meredith and I, we did an order from the Cozy Knitter in September, I think. Um, so the Cozy Knitter on her Bliss base, and this is the signature colorway. Superwash and nylon, um, and it's gorgeous. I haven't kept on. I just wound my cakes last night and prepped my needles. They're in my bag ready to go. So I'm really excited. I just find that this is a perfect January, February um, colorway. It's like icy, you know? I don't know. I'm really excited. And this yarn is lovely. I have two pairs of socks knit up with this. Um, so yeah, I will, I'm, I'm hoping to do both toes this afternoon, and then they'll be ready to just take with me whenever I'm out and about. And for those, I'm using my size one uh, carbon needles, which I love. And I think last time I used one and a half, US one and a half, and I found that they could be a little bit tighter, so that's why I'm going down to a one for these ones. And these are being held in my Maple Moose Fibers bag by Michelle. You can check her out on Facebook as Maple Moose Fibers. And the inside is little birds. Chirp, chirp. So that is ready to go. And then I also have, checking off my show note list, I have some coffee. Rose is hearing things. Then I also have um, a shawl ready to go. I have knit the sunlight shawl for sad people twice now. Once for my mom and once for a friend who was getting married. It was her bridal shower gift. And it, both of them, I didn't want to give them away. It's kind of just the perfect simple, simple knit and just simple shawl to wear with anything and just it's gorgeous. So it's by, I just looked it up now and her Ravelry name and her designer name is Sylvia Bobilvia. So her name's Sylvia. I don't know if that's her real last name. So you can check her out. She has a lot of really awesome patterns and she's very cool. So again, I am using, this is the Highland, Highland Handmaid's show. I'm using her red maple sock, which is merino, 50% merino and 50% tensile. So it's got some gorgeous shine to it. And this is the Darcy colorway. Um, so this is the one that I showed you guys. I got it at Knit East. I just was able to pull this right off last night. So it's still in a cylinder. This is the one that I have purchased before and I knit the shawl, the sunlight shawl for sad people for my mom. So I'm going to knit the exact same shawl for me. And then we're going to be matchy-patchy. 
So, and this time I just, I print up the pattern super tiny because it's a really easy, like once you get the setup, you're done and you just, you know, it's just really easy. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so I just wanted to, I didn't want to have a great big piece of folded paper in my bag. So I just printed it tiny, tiny, and then I laminated it with tape. Yep. Shiny. Way to go, Natasha. And I'm using size 6 um, Knitter's Pride uh, Symphony, I think they're called. It's my interchangeable set. I'm not awake yet, you guys. So going to cast that on today. And this is in my um, Little Skein bag, Little Skein in the Big Wool by Anne. You can check her out on Etsy. And I'm going to cast that on this afternoon. So those are my whips. I just went to heat up my coffee because I am chatty this morning. And we're on to acquisitions, which is perfect. I can talk about my mug. As I mentioned uh, when I talked about my Cozy Memories blanket, my aunt, when she came up for Christmas, she brought me... Um, my birthday present. She's actually in Aunt Mary. Hello. She's in our Nitty's episode. We cheers with our wine. Well, I have wine. She has a martini. So that's my Aunt Mary. She's lovely and she spoils me. She always has. I used to go to Tangent. I used to go to craft shows with her when I was little and she had like toll painting and she made Christmas wreaths and all kinds of, she's done everything. And she used to make, let me make little bracelets and necklaces and I would sell them. And I remember wearing like the Northern Reflections. I don't know if that's in the States, but it's in Canada. Like, um, jogging suit, but like pretty, it matched. Like the top and the bottom was the same color. And then you had like the winter scene on the front. So cool. So cool. So I have fun memories of going to craft shows with Aunt Mary. And she's wonderful. She made me an entire thing of butter tarts for my birthday. She used to do that when I was little and I would hide them under my bed and eat them all. I think maybe I mentioned that in the last episode that I was hoping I was going to get that for my birthday. I did. Sean didn't get any. I had a butter tart for breakfast every morning, which is ridiculous. So on the 31st, there were two left, and I said, I have to eat both of these for breakfast because I, I can't have butter tarts tomorrow. We're starting the new year without butter tarts. So anyway, so she brought my birthday present, and she got me this lovely mug. It's a mug for knitters right there. And then, I don't know what to do this. Some sock yarn. I'm just going to go very quick because there's a lot. I think I want to knit my dad a pair of socks in this color. I think Paul would rock that. Paint and scroll. Um, and then some gorgeous, I don't think you can see the sparkle, but there's some serious sparkle in here. Um, Bernat sock. Some knit clips for when I seam together a sweater. I think she's trying to get me to do that. Oh, 10 more years. I got more of this one. And then I, I um, holiday 2015 episode of Vogue Knitting. And then um, a sock journal calendar. So it goes through every month with a different pattern. So I thought I should try that, but I don't want to commit to it because then I will stress myself out. So I want to at least do four of them or five throughout the year. And because also I'm not a, I'm vanilla sock all the way because it's my easy, um, mindless knitting. We'll see. But that was really nice of you. So thank you all, Mary. Put it all back in here. I also have some acquisitions. So the hat that I knit for my friend out of Heidi's by hand, that's not in a skein anymore, it's a hat. While we were there recording the podcast, the Christmas episode, I had also purchased a skein for Cheryl, 
who was interviewed in the Knit East episode. She was pregnant at the time. Um, she had her baby boy on December 27th. He's healthy and the cutest little thing ever. His name is Soren James. And so when we were there, I had purchased her a skein of Heidi's sock yarn. Um, Cheryl loves mint color. So I purchased that for her. And I considered um, casting on and starting the toe, like doing both of them for her so that when the baby was here, she would already have, she could just knit and knit. But then I didn't know if she would want me to do that. So anyways, I, I gave her that skein when I dropped off her Christmas gift um, on the 23rd or the 24th. And then she had Soren on the 27th, and he's just the sweetest little guy. And he's been wearing my sweater that I knit for him. It fits him perfectly. It's not going to fit him in a week. I just saw them on Thursday night. And, oh, he's just, he's so tiny. And it, it's, it, the sweater looks even smaller on him. Oh my goodness. So that was an acquisition as well that Cheryl has. Um, and then I also picked up, I was running low. I have two other tins of this, the Lavache um, uh, Lotion bars. Um, this is my favorite. It's the yarn bar. It just smells really, really good. And they've switched. They've, they've got new, um, they used to come in tins, but now it's a plastic container. It's a lot easier to open. And then you just kind of push the bottom and pop it out. So I've got that in my sock, Sean's work in progress sock bag. I also received my December Jimmy Beans wool bean bag. This one, Aunt Mary was here, um, was visiting before Christmas and I showed her, I said, what are these? Like these came in the bag, but I don't know what they are. Clearly Natasha did not read everything else that came with it properly. They're pom-pom makers. So they came with this pattern, um, so then it tells you here how to use these. Read Natasha. So there's two different sizes. So that'll be fun because I haven't, I've just made them by hand and they've been, you know, interesting. And then there's five skeins this time of worsted weight. Um, There's some Lorna's Laces, Madeline Tosh, which I know is this one. Vintage, gorgeous. Uh, Plymouth Worsted, Rowan, and Universal Yarn. So that's always a fun treat to get in the mail. My other, my January one, I think it just shipped yesterday, so I'll have that next week for sure. I need to start, I need to work on my family memories blanket because I need to start getting these things in my blanket. Not the worst it, but the last shipment. So there is that. And then for Christmas, my sister Monique, who lives in Chicago, who is has access to my favorite yarn store in uh, Niche, she got my name for Christmas. And she received my sweater. Um, there are pictures of her wearing it. We Skyped after Christmas. So there's a picture of her wearing her Grace cardigan on my project page for the Grace Cardigan. Fits her perfectly, she loves it. So my gift from her, she even sent the bag, which made me really happy from Niche. So I got, let me take it all out. Here. Last time she bought me a necklace uh, for my maid of honor gift for her wedding that had a one inch on it. And this time I got scissors. It's really cute. I haven't worn it yet because I wanted to show you. So it's it's the Ornamental Things is the company. You can find them online. They have a lot of awesome, different, unique uh, jewelry. So I got that. And then a gorgeous gain of yarn from Happy Fuzzy Yarn. She ripped the label. Monique, I know how much yarn costs. You can just leave it on next time. Don't rip the label. It's ridiculous, I'm OCD. So it's fingering and it's Cordale, which I haven't used yet. It's 75 Cordale, 75 or 25 nylon, nylon, 435 yards. And it is just a really gorgeous 
um, brown and blue. That's a really good uh, shot there of it. So I love it. And I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. I have no idea. But thank you, Mink. And then I also got the Knitter's Keep um, kit from Coco Knits. So awesome. I saw this when we were there, when we were in Chicago this summer. And she said, oh, don't buy it. Would that be a good Christmas present for you? I said to wait until Christmas. <laughs> So it comes with a bracelet and an adorable bag. So it's magnetic. So when you're working on a lace shawl or anything really, you, you put this on and I love that she got the gray for me. It's my color. And then you have nickel plated steel. They're all nickel plated steel. You have large stitch markers, small stitch markers, tapestry needle, cable needers, and opening stitch markers. So you can, you know, if you're going across your shawl and you need to start adding the stitch markers or you need to move them or take them off, they, you've got them right here. That's awesome. There's no fear of losing them in the couch. So, and I mean, I think it looks really cool. I'm a knitter, what? I got my bracelet on. So awesome. So that was from Monique. So that was a really great Christmas gift. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Full of thank yous today. And that's it, folks. I didn't, I didn't get a lot. Um, I mean, that's a lot to me, so that's what I mean. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It was a wonderful Christmas. Spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. All right, now I would like to talk to you about acquisitions. My dear friend Whitney bought me this bag for Christmas. I feel she bought it when she was traveling this fall. But now I can't remember where she said... Mar Morocco? No. I have to check with her, but it's really fun and pretty and bright. Just fair warning, there's going to be a lot of bags to show for my acquisitions. So along with my lovely shirt, I bought two different ones, but I also got this bag, the Ravelry ABC bag. It's cute. I don't know why I need so many bags. I was really an impulse shopper over Christmas, I must say. I mean, well, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> All right, so my friend Jennifer and I, I texted her one day at work, and, well, we both were at work, and I sent her a picture of a bag from Fringe Supply Co., and I said something like, I know you can't be trusted to talk me out of buying this. And she didn't. She added to the order. <laughs> Alrighty, so we ordered from French Placco. Great company. Karen Templer, based out of Nashville, Tennessee, US. United States of America. Alright, so I got a couple Christmas gifts for people from there, but I also got a couple things for myself. To add to the fun of that, she wanted to get a certain bag. It's called the it was I don't know, but it was a jumbo size. It was an ivory color, really pretty, really good quality, and it was about like 120 US, so in Canadian dollars, it's close to $200. Anyway, I ordered two by accident. I don't know. So, and I thought well, maybe I'll keep it, but then that's a lot of money for something that I don't really need. And it was ivory, like that color isn't isn't gonna work here, honestly. Not because it was so big that you would put it like on resting on the floor. Anyway, I sent it back. Karen was wonderful with that. Okay, so I got a little pouch. This is really sweet. I honestly was saving it to use it um, for after I showed you. So it's the Boku, Boku, B-O-O-K-H-O-U. It's really adorable pattern.
And, oh gosh, I forgot the name of this. It's her super popular bag. I have a feeling there might be some other podcasters who have this and I've already showed you. But you can hold it with this strap. And inside, it's a black hole. But no, it's got grommets and like pockets and it cinches. It cinches, it does. I'm just weak. Yeah, French Psycho, made in the U.S. So this is going to be great. And it's funny because I was joking with TJ that, like, we need more olive drab in this house. Because he's in the military, so we already have a lot. Alright, so that's what I scored from Fringe & Co. I always love their aesthetic. It's just clean and simple and functional. So now I can use it. <laughs> I was waiting to show you. Back in the fall, Tannis Lavelle, Lavelle, I don't know how you say her last name, of Tannis Fiber Arts posted a holiday gift bundle, which I did buy, but I waited till Christmas, I got it for a gift, and the calendar is up, so it was a calendar, a bag, and yarn. Calendar is already up, because this is January, however, here's the other bit that came. So this is a skein of her blue label in raindrops. Raindrops and kittens and do, 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 do. those aren't the words, but this lovely color as always. And the bag is by oh no, there's stitch markers too. Simple and simple solid rings by Fripperies and Bibelots. Cute name. Little stitch markers. Well, just wait a minute. Oh, that's cool. Okay, these look like little raindrops. Do they not? The color is raindrops. And the bag by Jenna Rose is clouds. I, that totally went right over my head. But, oh my goodness. Wow. It smells good. So, yeah. I was waiting to show you all that. Lovely. I just love Jenna Rose's stuff. And this one is, in particular, it's so vibrant. Like, most of the things I have of hers are more muted palette. But this is just really vibrant. Pretty. And it's, it's like a linen fabric. Obviously hand printed by her. We're really lucky, lucky to live in a time where there are so many beautiful things out there that we have access to. You know, we can just go online and say, oh, I want it. I'm going to buy it. Well, if you have the money, which, speaking of which, uh, oh, I'll get to that after, after I'm done here. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, hmm. Okay, two things, two more things for acquisitions. Of course, I bought some Heidi's by Hand Yarn when we were there before Christmas. Let me just, oh. Loud. It's a big bag. That's not hiding. All right, so we got this lovely skein. I don't know the color. It's like really pretty. Mauves and little bright turquoise and blues and it's really nice. And as you remember seeing, Natasha bought me the kit for the this and that cowl, which we're going to be doing an end along for this uh, shortly. Heidi's opening a, a shop, online shop, so if people want to either buy the kit or buy the pattern, they can. Well, they can buy the pattern on, on Ravelry, but um, yeah. And then I bought a sweater's worth of this lovely color. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like a denim. I look good with my eyes. Guys, you're lucky that she's opening a shop online because for many years you had to go to her shop, her actual physical shop, which is an experience. Like, I wouldn't deter anyone from doing it if they could. But, and the last thing I bought 
I'm not going to move it here, uh, but it's the Take Heart book by Fiona Alice, who we met at Knit East and who we love. Uh, okay, I'll take it. Oh, she's just so sweet. It's her Take Heart book. Friends of the Yarn Harlot. Stephanie Pro McPhee may recognize the model on the cover because she used to work for Stephanie. It's just a lovely book. It's published by Pom Pom Press from the UK. Those of you who went to Knit East might recognize this cowl. All of the illustrations were done by Fiona as well. They're just cute. She's so talented. Oh. Like there's the... I would highly recommend buying this book. It's from UK. It's from, obviously, ships from London. It came... Okay, this came really fast. Because I ordered this, and I also ordered some bags from Vancouver. Bags. More bags. And I ordered the bags... But I ordered this probably a week later, if not more, and this arrived first. Oh, Canada Post, to get it together. Anyhow, the book is signed, which makes it just even more special. Okay, don't fall. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Look, Natasha. <laughs> this is the one that Natasha gave me for Christmas. It's cute. I'm getting, I'm very unfocused today, so I'm sorry for that. Yeah, those are my acquisitions. One thing I need to get, uh, there's these stitch markers. They're like, they're like safety pin stitch markers, but they don't have any of the, like, the loopy bits at the bottom. But no, they're like teardrop shaped, so they go like, doo doo. Anyhow, I had a thousand of them or something, and I can't find any of them, so I need to get more of those, but I guess that's on my, like, to-do list. It's not really an acquisition. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right, so for my here and now, it has been several weeks since we recorded. Chris, no, Boxing Day was the last episode, so today's January 17th, so... Well, when I'm recording, I'm going to try to get out today as well. But, uh, so here and now, I had two weeks Christmas vacation, Christmas holiday. It was great, other than the basement flooding. And I knit and saw family and I saw friends. I bought a new winter coat, much needed winter coat. And, I don't know, I just kind of been soaking up how wonderful life is and how good it is. One good thing about life lately has been some mini skein swaps, which they're just really impromptu. Um, someone messaged me, Dana messaged and said, hey, would you like to do this? And absolutely. So she sent me 20 mini skeins. Quigu, Plucky Knitter, Madeline Tosh, Tannis Fiber Arts. Goodness, goodness gracious. So I received this and, oh, Malbrigo. I received this and then I got her stuff all ready to go. And it's here. In my bowl. And it's going to be going out to her probably to tomorrow. I want to send it in a pretty bag. So I'm going to have to run to Staples to get that. But um, after that, I saw another lady on Instagram who had just started her blanket and I just said hey we should do a swap and so I think she and I are going to send each other some mini skeins it's fun now I I said to TJ last night like I spent all night Friday fiddling around with yarn sorting the mini skeins winding the mini skeins I haven't labeled them yet uh but I'm like some days I I just like playing with yarn and not necessarily knitting with it. I don't know if that makes me a heretical knitter, but yeah, I just liked, yeah, I don't know. 
I'm sure I'm not the only one like that. So yeah, the mini skeins. Uh, yesterday, TJ and I went to a seminar, free seminar at Home Depot on like how to redo your basement, how to refinish your basement, which we need to do and it just needs to get done. We just need to finish the demo and just do it. The thing, I guess, with all projects, big or small, is the planning and knowing the steps in which to, how like, the steps in which to complete the project. So you can think, oh, it's going to look like this, and you know that dreaming and planning and writing down is your first step, but then do you buy the supplies first, or do you hire a contractor first? Do you hire a contractor at all? Do you do the, the framing of the walls first and then the floor? Do you have to level the floor first before you do the walls? What if you want to do the floor first and then do the walls? Uh, yeah, it's just, I know nothing about it. TJ knows a bit. Um, and I don't know. It just, it would just, it would almost double our living space. So that would be great. Conrad, oh, now he's looking. Hi, buddy. He had a birthday on January 10th. He turned eight years old. For a Dane, that's pretty good. I did see online the other day, someone had a Dane that was 13 years old. And I don't even know. She was very lucky because they typically, um, big hearts, they don't last that long. Also, it's my birthday tomorrow. I'm going to be 34. I had a panic attack the other day. I thought I was 35. Which there's nothing wrong being 35, but if you just skip a year, it's not cool. So, I don't know what we're going to do. TJ says he might have something planned. Um, I kind of want to eat at Isaac's way again. Uh, I'm not sure. Take it easy. I'm not a big party person. Unlike Miss Natasha, who loves to celebrate. And I'm pretty sure she probably wore a princess crown on her birthday, but I'm not going to do that. Hopefully no one will know it's my birthday. So, I like to be low-key. But I still like presents, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's all for my my here and now, I think. Just trying to get through winter, trying to get through the storms. Lots of winter storms. We had a couple huge ones and a couple small ones. So we have a snowblower, and uh, we're lucky that way. So we don't have to shovel. Here and now, oh my goodness. Just really busy. My husband and I both went back to work this week, and new students starting in January. It was a pretty wild week. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, just a lot going on. And New Year shenanigans, you know. Sean has been at Good Life, the gym, for a year now, and I decided to join him. I'm a runner, but... I know that I need more. Like, I have no upper body strength. You should see me trying to do the weights. It's ridiculous. I can't even do a push-up, but I'm going to be able to. So we've been doing that this week, and it's crazy how quickly you feel better. You know, three times a week. And as I said, I'm a runner, but it's just the same thing over and over again, and I've been doing that for so long that I really do. I did need something more. And in the winter time, it's just going to be easier and warmer. I, I love winter running. I have all my gear, and it's just the fear of slipping on ice. And if you hurt yourself, then you're down. Like, that's it. So the gym has been fun. And the cottage, we went to the cottage. That was such a great trip. And Bean had a birthday. Rosa's birthday is in a couple weeks. Rosa's birthday is on January 22nd. And Bean's birthday was on Boxing Day. So she's she's a professional gift opener, that girl. I We took a video. I don't remember if I have it. If I do, I'm going to send it to Meredith, and she'll include it at the end of this episode because I know she has a clip of Conrad opening his gifts. If I don't, I'm sorry. I had to delete some stuff off my phone because things got... I was taking all the pictures at Christmas. Oh, I'm reading... Girl on the Train, The Girl on the Train. I should have grabbed it. Google it, you'll find it. Everyone's reading it right now. I think they're making a movie. It is crazy. 
I could have read it in one day, but I wanted to, I just didn't, I wanted to enjoy it for a little while. But sometimes, and I've never read, I'm like a chick flick drama. Um, I don't read anything scary or thrillers or science, science, sci-fi. It's not my thing. This is crazy. And there was one day when I was reading and the last sentence in that chapter was just, I had to close the book and I was scared. And I have 30 pages left, and it was really late last night, and I wanted to finish it, but I was scared that I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. So it's really good. It's not even scary. It's not, I, I'm just ridiculous. But read that. Um, and then Cheryl's baby boy, Soren, was born, and that's here now. I, I, babies are so cute. Oh, my goodness. So visiting them is on my list of things to do all the time. And Sean made, the night that they came home from the hospital, Sean made a fresh batch of rolls and a lentil barley soup and some bread pudding. And we took it down to them very quickly, just popped in. We don't want to interrupt. You know, it's your first night home. But here, here's some delicious warm things to, to make you feel better. So um, they're doing really, really well. Cheryl looks amazing. She's so happy. And like I said, Soren is the sweetest little baby boy. Oh, my goodness. And then I wanted to give a special shout out to Isabel, my friend. Um, she's actually Heidi's, Heidi from London Wool. She's her niece-in-law, I'll call her. And so she's so lucky that she has Heidi, like, firsthand in the family. Um, her and my husband grew up together. Their parents are really good friends. So we've known each other, but we haven't. I mean, we knew who each other were, but we weren't friends. But we just had a little bit of a knit night this week, and she's she's starting a cowl, and she wants to learn how to knit socks. And it's just so awesome. Like, we have talked to each other every day for the past couple of weeks, um, messaging back and forth. And it's really neat to see that transformation. Like, when you know someone is becoming a knitter. And I told her husband, I said, he came home the other night while I was there, and I said, I'm sorry. In advance, I apologize for the yarn that is going to be purchased in the future. Whoops. But, Isabel, I'm so happy for you. You're going to be a great knitter. She's she's a good uh, self-learner. Like, she's rocking the YouTube videos, and she'll ask me questions, but then I'll answer, and she'll say, well, I saw this. I'm like, oh, my God, you're good. You've already got this. So when I, hopefully, hopefully soon, she's going to do, I'm going to help her with, her first pair of socks and she's going to use Heidi's by hand and I think the same colorway um, that I knit my first pair of socks Heidi still has it I showed it on the last when we were at London Wool but it's not exactly the same it's very similar to this so that'll be exciting and she's going to be a great knitter so way to go Isabel happy knitting that's my year and now what's grabbing my attention have you guys seen, I saw it on Instagram, uh, Ninja Chickens is her Instagram name. She posted a picture of her latest design, the Drekken Shawl. It is, it's huge and it is beautiful. And the colors that she chose, oh my goodness. Maybe I can show you. It's lace and brioche. Brioche, I never quite remember how to say that. It's so gorgeous. So I have to admit that. I absolutely have to. And I'm thinking it's going to be um, my March project because I would like, I think it's going to take some time. It is, like I said, it's, it's large and difficult. I've never done brioche before. So um, it's just, it's going to be tricky. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Oh. So the brioche panel just goes down the center in the contrasting color. So I would like to knit that in March, and then it will be my uh, Easter shawl for Easter dinner. I think that would be lovely. The light is changing. Is that right? Hustle and Natasha. And she, her name is Maria, and I have heard her on Woolful before. At the end of the Woolful podcast, she has the panel of, I forget what she calls it, um, but people can call in and, and discuss the topic that she has brought up or addressed for that week. So you'll hear Maria from Ninja Chickens uh, on there. 
And then I also grabbed my attention is Eric from the Sticks Plus Twine podcast is doing a knit along for men's accessories. So, which is really great because I've been putting off knitting those pair of socks for Sean because he doesn't want a pair, but I know that once he has them, he'll wear them. So thank you, Eric. That made me cast on. And I also, so my first, the first part of that cowl was the hat for Sean and then the socks go with it. And I think that they match because they're gray, you know? So Sean, so that, that has to be done by February 14th, which can also be like, happy Valentine's Day and get you a pair of socks. You're welcome. That's what's going on. That's what's grabbing my attention. Going on the, in the fiber world right now that are grabbing my attention. One such thing were these cute little project bags from Sweet Fiber. And I was going to talk about them here, but I'm actually going to have to show them to you uh, in acquisitions in a couple weeks. So, um, another thing that's grabbing my attention, which probably should have been in here and now, but uh, it's the X Files show. Now, I was not an original X Files fan because I was in high school, junior high when it was on, and we didn't really watch much television. So I've been catching up on Netflix, and the end of this month, the 24th and 25th, I believe, or the 24th, uh, the new X-Files series is starting. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Oh, this really should have been in grabbing my attention. No, here and now. There's a local designer to Fredericton named Sarah Arnold, and she designs many lovely things, socks, mittens, hats. Uh, one such pair of mittens, they are uh, called the Corbett, Corbett Brook Mittens. And she has graciously offered to give away a pattern for her mittens uh, to one of our viewers. So this is, uh, this is what her mittens look like. They're knit in worsted weight, two colors, endless possibilities, and they also can be lined. So they're beautiful and I will open a thread on Ravelry. If you would like to wear, uh, win this pattern, just comment. Maybe comment and say what colors you would use and what yarn. That'd be great. So thank you, Sarah. Uh, the only other thing grabbing my attention right now is the Knitter's Frolic in Toronto. And I, my friend Jennifer is going to go up and I'm thinking of going. But I also was doing my annual budget last week. <sighs> and I don't feel like it would be smart to spend money on that right now. I haven't taken any vacations in since May. And so that's, it's not like, you know, I, I've i been going away too much or anything. I just feel, I, I told myself and I told a coworker that I was going to go on a yarn spending freeze for the month of January. That doesn't include swaps, things like that, or things I had already ordered that are on their way. But I just feel like I want to be responsible. I want to be debt-free forever, as Gail Vaz Oxlade would say. And we want to investigate maybe buying a new house. So, yeah, you can't do that if you don't plan ahead. So, I don't know. I'm torn, and I, I really don't really, I really don't really. I don't like the idea of, like, stash knit-downs or things like that. So, well, actually... I'm either going to go on a spending freeze for yarn or I'm going to sell some of my stash that I already have that I know I'm not going to knit. And I did start putting things in my first seller trade, actually. So if you're interested, if you see something you like, just send me a message. And, uh, yeah, I would love to, you know, sell you some of the stuff that is beautiful. I just and am not able to give it the love it deserves right now. So yeah, that's my, this was grabbing my attention. I must say though, uh, I had sent raining sheep 
a parcel before Christmas. She was having surgery and she was housebound for six weeks. So she made some pretty cool stuff out of the yarn I sent her, which was Blue Sky Alpaca Extra. That was the name of the yarn that I could not for the life of me think of last time. So actually this is um, this is what her what she made out of that yarn and they're simply lovely and they suit her aesthetic so well. The last segment today is the Woolies section. I wanted to highlight two projects this week. The first is by Yellowbird Knits. It's her Wheaton hat, which she shared with the group. There it is. It's lovely. I like the picture. I love the color. The cables are cool how they like mirror each other. And I think that's really neat. The second one, and I'm not sure if this is the one that Natasha picked too, but it's the Tatera Mitts by Elise Deer. And they're adorable as well. Plus the coffee she's holding looks delish. Put it down. So thanks guys for sharing your projects with us. And please, you know, as you finish things, share them with the group. They don't have to be specific to something we've talked about here. So whatever you're working on, we want to see it. We want to encourage you in what you're making and uh yeah because you guys are, you guys make the group totally uh i just wanted to say too and I, I did briefly touch on it at the very beginning but just love getting to know you guys and just your generosity and your friendship has really been an encouragement to me since we started but definitely uh in the last couple weeks as well So again, thanks for joining us today. We'll be recording together in a couple weeks. And uh, yeah, thank you. Happy knitting. Hey guys, different time of day. I was just uploading all of my segments to Meredith and I realized that this one went missing. It disappeared. So it is not, um, it's not Saturday morning anymore. It's late Saturday night and uh, I've been to the gym, I've done a million and one things today, and I'm going to just quickly re-record it, just right here. I have no knitting with me, I'm just, we're doing this. So, Wally's segment, what I have to, to say and to mention to you guys in the group, um, this week the project that was shared that I have chosen to show off was shared by Tristy, who is Dawn on Ravelry. She shared the Alpine Trail hat. Um, so it is, lighting is not gonna work with me. Sorry, that's it. You can check it out on the shared projects, but the yarn, what does she use? It's just like this, oh, it's Miss Babs. Um, Movalicious, oh, great name. I just love the pom-pom, the white pom-pom and the white spots in the yarn. It just really, um, it's gorgeous. The pom-pom like brings out the, the white in the yarn. And it's so squishy, you can tell in this picture. The horizontal cable is, the braid cable is awesome. Anyways, I love it. Great job, John. it's gorgeous. Thank you for sharing with the group. So that's all for me this week. Just a little quick segment I'll throw in here at the end. We had, I mentioned this in my other clip, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again now because I have a funny little segment that's like an extra. Um, so of course that segment's still there, but the other one's missing. We had friends over for brunch this morning, so Sean was making breakfast while I was finishing up my podcast this morning. And he just made the most delicious brunch ever, and anyways, there's a funny story, and it's Sean. He loves to cook. He got a kitchen aid for Christmas from his mom, and so he's made croissants and all kinds of different bread and rolls and cookies, just ridiculous everything. I told him he's going to make a fat woman out of me. Ah. So anyways, we're having, we had brunch, and it was delicious. We had a really great day. And I just want to say happy knitting, 
Bean's having a little, little scratch session right now. Happy knitting. I'm so glad that uh, you guys are here with us, and I'm so glad to have spent some time with you twice today. So happy knitting and happy new year. See ya. I'm back. I have to add this. I just went out to the kitchen and said to Sean, I'm done. You can make noise now. He's making blueberry cake. Hi. I said, why are you making blueberry cake for brunch? Because we get blueberry cake. See what I mean? The KitchenAid. I'm having cake for breakfast. It's going to be so good. I hope you guys are having cake for breakfast too. Again, bye and happy knitting.